The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too familiar. Welcome to my brother, my brother, me an advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin Tyler McElroy. I'm your middlest brother, Travis Patrick McElroy Esquire. And I'm your sweet baby brother and 30 under 30, media luminary, Griffin, healthy boy McElroy. Back on his grind. Back on and had been chomping down those vitamins, as my Ooh. friends in uh, you know New Zealand call them, vitamins. And uh, vitamins. such a fun little turn of phrase. And yeah, I'm empowered by the D and by the E and by the C. So, feeling great. Excellent. Uh, such a proud moment today. I activated uh, on Hulu an episode of Sailor Moon Crystal, the sort of revamp, relaunch uh, on Hulu. And I started the English version mm. because my daughter speaks English. Primarily. We, we've, primarily. I, I've been trying to teach her Icelandic, but she's... She also claims to speak baby whenever she hangs out with Henry and Charlie, so... True. Yes, that's true. And she has picked up a good amount of uh, Spanish from Dora. I started this episode of Sailor Moon, and my daughter loudly announced, and I don't know where she picked this phrase up, I can only imagine, she loudly announced that she wanted subs, not dubs. Well, wouldn't, yeah, that's, uh, I mean, she's a purist, and the, yeah. that's that's, uh, that's very, I mean, good. You, sh- you need to nurture that small flame into a raging bonfire of sort of righteousness uh, yeah. ab- about sort of anime, h- how they sort of get their info across. Uh, I like I like how you said you don't know where she got that from, as though it wasn't from Taylor. Yeah, or from she doesn't she's not on like Tumblr, is she? God, I hope not. No, nah, she's not on Tumblr. She's, she's on, on Tumblr Junior. Yeah, she's on Toddler Tumblr. Uh, whoa, ToddlerTumblr dot com. Let me just see if I can get that one real quick. <laughs> uh, here's a. Uh, so I'm very proud of my daughter. I and she said that she she wanted to watch it so she could learn Japanese, which I told her that that I, is I, that's exactly read, how it works so actually. Know. Uh, so this concludes <laughs> everything all... we know. <laughs> no, this concludes all the discussion we ever want to have about anime. So please, I mean, I say, could go. I, I can go hard if y'all want. Nah, you got Twitter up right now at home. You're ready to tweet a uh, great bomb ma about just maybe don't. I don't actually want to talk about anime uh, anymore. So that's all the anime discussion that we're ever going to have. So this is not a continuing bit. I mean, I will continue to reference Yuri on Ice wherever and whenever it is uh, even remotely appropriate. So look look forward to that. But Did yes, the cool kids ever call that Yuri on the rocks? Uh, no, that's a different show where it's two, um, uh, you, you know, rock climbers, but they're very much in love. Mm-hmm. Very, uh, very deeply in love. Here's a new um, segment on the show. Um, just want to, uh, it's called domain renewals. And these are domains that, uh, I have now owned for over a year and are still operational. Just want to remind everybody, these are just from this month, the ones that, um, I, the domains that, uh, I own that are up for renewal. Just to remind everybody about these great domains, uh, Renewed this month, dadyelp.com. <laughs> so a lot of our business seems to be like ty- a type of age of person and then existing existing brand. Can we I, remember, I, was Dad Yelp a Yelp for dads? For dads. Or was it like a Yelp to rate dads you've experienced? I uh, I think it was a Yelp just for dads. Um, I, I actually, uh, uh, thinking about it, I made uh, teengoogle.com goes to still buffering the uh, podcast about the teenage experience. And uh, I have been thinking about it. I think uh, dad Yelp should probably go to We Got This with Mark and Hal. Yeah. Like, that's basically like dad Yelp, right? I do like, Justin, how your domains have become like the Christian mingle of like 
I guess, weird comedy part of like, it's just always something mingle. What I love is that um, I forget the jokes that we tell more or less as soon as we publish the episode sure. that contains them. And yet you pay an annual fee to remember our half jokes. It's just as though a- our, our dumb, dumb jokes cost you money to make. Yeah, you are paying a premium for our dumb, dumb jokes. Yeah, just some other ones that have come up, like literally just this month. I guess in January I go hard on domains. Just this month, illegal.horse is back up for renewal. Uh, Sexymugshots.com. That (laughs) autofills every time I press S and I have to remind myself that I'm not like a deep web pervert. Sexymugshots.com is back up for renewal. That goes to our YouTube channel for some reason. Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Also, uh, other domains that have just popped up, my youngest son's seventh word hyphen my youngest son's 15th word dot wow, pizza holy shit. is uh, back up for renewal of that, that deep cut from the Mabim Bam ARG, TV show ARG. And uh, I think those are all the domains that are up. Oh, boo boo nanny dot com. <laughs> okay. do, not, uh, do not remember. So that's like $500 nanny. that you're paying. To keep these these balls in the air. I keep waiting for the offers to come in on these domains, so for someone to try to buy them out from underneath me. Do you claim those on your taxes yet. as expenses, and are you worried about getting audited? Um, I mean, I, they're legitimate. It's a legitimate business expense, I think. Which one vapes is broken now? Oh, no. Which is, I know. Which Got, too hot. Got too hot. Got too hot. Whoever created which one we, vapes, please fix it. Should we answer some questions, you think? Oh, that sounds actually really nice. Try a griff. You're Griffin, yeah. That sounds nice. One of my friends recently got really into baking loaves of bread and likes to share them with me. Problem is, they all taste super bad. It's a bad bake, Barry. It's a bad bake. How can I be gracious and accepting his gifts without wasting a bunch of bread? I don't want to tell him the bread sucks because he's very proud of them, but what do I do? That's from th- That says thanks. Awkward in Philly is who that's from. Mm. Uh, can you waste bad bread? Is the, the bread's wasted. Like yeah. the bread is wasted. Well, well, what has been wasted here is the flour, the yeast, the the water and sugar, the time, the time especially, um, the heat from the oven. Like that energy can't be con- created or destroyed, but it can't be wasted. Uh, you know, f- firming up some bad bread. What are we that talking energy about? Energy is trapped in that bread, and if you don't free it. Yeah. It's just trapped there well, you free it by giving it to a duck who then turns it into, you know, dookie and <laughs> duck flight. Ducky dookie. So, yes. So yes. The, du- the ducks fly and makes all the wind. But sometimes the wind gets to be too bad and we get, you know, hurricanes, tornadoes. Dry it out. Mm. Uh-huh. Put it in the uh, food processor, whiz it into breadcrumbs, and then take a coffee can and cover it in peanut butter. Uh huh. And then put the breadcrumbs all over that, and then hang the coffee can outside. And you got yourself a nice little bird feeder. And then you and then you wait for them to fall into your trap. Yeah, yeah. I I do like awkward and Philly that that you have failed to see that there might be a middle road between accepting the bad bread. And saying, this bread sucks. And that is like, not returning your friend's calls ever again. Well, no, but right. like, it's it's pretty well established practice to say like, oh, this is great. And then give like a tiny note. Like a ti- tiny note. Oh, is that established? Is that something I can yeah, do when in my day to day? When fr- someone's just starting out. When someone's just starting mm. out on a new uh, hobby experience. Like, to to try to pretend like you nailed it 100% the first time, nobody expects that. Now, it might be too late now, because you might have accepted too many. But this is more of a cautionary tale for the next loaf receiver to say, like, oh, this is great. Maybe a little too much salt. Try less next time. Boom. Done. You've established, like, because if somebody's trying out a new experience, they want feedback. They don't want you to be like, you're the greatest. (laughs) I I, I love you, bud, but they wicked don't. They want to be. Unless your friend has said, "Be sure to hit me with all of your great feedback after you finish consuming my gift," then they do not, in fact, want that. I bake. I bake from time to time, and I know I overneed my stuff sometimes. And all I want is for people to look at me like I'm the motherfucking barefoot Contessa. Like that's literally all that I I need from that transaction. Also, it's like I wish this person had been more specific with the problems in the bread because Mm -hmm. the. Your friend, like, unless you're a bread expert, 
maybe you're not gonna know that like hey you had too much leavening in here like hey like the 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 you added a little bit too much you know milk and you made the batter too wet like you're not gonna know that from eating the bread you gotta watch I your think... friend bake the bread step by step and then you'll see yeah. the process like you've got pour the yeast in pour uh, water, you want that water to be between 100 and 110 degrees, activate the yeast for about five yeast. minutes. So then you're going to add your dry ingredients, incorporate those in, a little bit of egg, yeah. and then I'm going to dump in a two-liter Mountain Dew and then move it. Oh, wait, wait, <laughs> wait, wait, hold on, okay. hold on, hold wait, on, wait, hold wait, on. Wait, wait. I think wait, wait, I see wait, the wait, problem. Wait. Oh, the yes. two the two pages stuck together in the book, you were making Mountain Dew cake. It's different. It's a different one. You weren't using Diet Mountain Dew, and that's, that's where the flavor sleeps. Mm-hmm. Actually, if you want a fucking cake... You but you take cake mix, mix it with twelve ounces of soda, and you got yourself a fucking cake going. That's a cake right there. Make a mountain ma- Mountain Dew with a little bit of lemon cake mix. Mountain now, Dew. Now, do you bake that or just like eat it with a spoon <laughs> while crying and also while getting cry- psyched up to play esports? <laughs> <laughs> uh, how about a Yahoo Griffin? I would love to give that to you. Because here's one from mm. level 9000, Yadru, Drew, Drew Davenport. Thank you, Drew. It's Yadru Answers user. Let's kick it after school. <laughs> <laughs> Who asks, should I punch Tyler in the face if he insists on calling eating refueling? He's annoying me. End of question. Now, no, you shouldn't punch your friend Tyler in the face. But I think if anybody in your life refers to the act of eating food whether it's you know a big sloppy joe or a rack of ribs or some weird bad mountain dew bread um and they call that refueling they need to be punished in some some unless. way mm, this is going to be a tricky needle but unless they're a robot a robot who is eats your friend tyler a robot yeah i mean you what it's 2018 we're just gonna toss out the fact that it might be a robot no there's a good chance that it's, it, it is a uh you know, some sort of frame. Is Tyler maybe a medium wonder? Not a not a small one, but an okay size. Yeah, it's okay size wonder. It's a medium wonder. Oh, all right. And I've got to refuel. What when you say eating, do you ever see the food actually go into Tyler's mouth and then defecate that food out later? Or maybe he just dumps out his chest cavity. Is, Have you followed his, it start to finish? Is his head a Mr. Fusion machine like in Back to the Future too? Another These are all good questions. These are the people and these are the exact circumstances those people can be in, in which you can refer to eating food as refueling. If you are a snowboarder who is on the slopes, mm-hmm. and you've just carved a very, very sick line, and you've done all the tricks, and I'm talking about Olympic-level you know, grabs and spins, and then you get to the bottom, and you pop into the, into the lodge, and you grab a quick, like... Um, you know, no, it's. I think you just maybe even pull some jerky out of your um, yeah, your fanny pack, and you eat some jerky, and you say, like, "Gotta refuel." That's okay because you've just done things that I think could re- necessitate fuel. Um, if you or a mountain biker, if you're a mountain biker and you just really any sort of downhill activities, and you reach the bottom of the hill and you want to go again, any food you eat at that point, I think you can say, "Time to refuel, bro." Surfers, I think, can also. Got to, you pat the tummy after doing a, a good pipe, and then you cool. pat the pat the tummy, and you say, "Got to refuel before I can get out there." And that's about it. Query for you, Griffin. Yes. Query. I am a blue belt in Taekwondo. Uh-huh. My Ooh. body is legally classified as a weapon at this point. Yeah, you are. Master, you're on the registry. Somewhere. Master Crook at Tri State Taekwondo says that my uh, my reaction time at this point is probably five percent better. Than someone who hasn't studied uh-huh. as long as I have, so I'm basically a weapon and a wonder. If I if if I eat food, like when I eat my quest bar, can I say I've got to reload? This Re- reload or refuel? Re- no, no, re- reload. I'm, am I reloading my weapon if I'm just oh, eating a quest bar? I'm reloading <sighs> the weapon. I do think to Griffin's point. And I think in all the scenarios Griffin listed, it has to be like you have like if you flip somebody, right, then immediately eat it. There's a yes. proximity to the event. It has to be immediately okay, you, flip, yes. you flip somebody, which um, based on what I know about sort of the classes you attend is, you know, a 10 year old. And then you, you flip them and they land real hard. And then you say, like, <laughs> got to reload. And you open up your mouth and you unwrap the quest bar and you go, <laughs> 
<clears throat> and maybe like another combatant's coming at you and you put your hand out for a second, take a bite of the quest bar, and then suddenly you grow like six inches and then Do flip them get, again? You, yeah, you must get stronger after eating the quest I bar. E I eat my quest bar right before class usually, so could I say like, sorry, hold on, Master Crook, gotta cock the food gun. Yeah, mm. gotta stockpile some punch ammo. Mm, yes, and yes, yes. You, this all works. But I, I do think that there's a certain amount of time after, like, you can't finish class, go home, watch, like, an episode of Drunk History, and, you yeah. know, maybe take a nap, and then wake up and say, gotta reload. Gotta no, refuel. It's you weird. can't. Yeah. I, um, I had a fun experience um, in, in Taekwondo class a little bit ago I wanted to share with y'all. I uh, We were doing a, a thing, kind of like conditioning. You know, a lot of it's just like building up your cardiovascular health, that kind of thing. It's great for you. So we, had, we were doing this thing where we had to like do, I think, round kicks on a bag as, as many times as we could in a minute. And uh, another guy in my class who I uh, is a great – guy but for some reason it was just the two of us in class so i got weirdly competitive so he kicked the bag like 40 times in a minute and he was like really winded and i was like i'm gonna fuck this guy up so i kicked the bag 50 times in a minute whoa and yeah i kicked the bag 50 <laughs> times in a minute and then master Cook was like wow justin good job i'm very proud of you and then i took four steps away and threw up on the floor <laughs> 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 what's great okay and that's let me amazing. Say that is, I was also about to ask, do you think that your master was about to be like, you are the chosen one? And then yeah. you vomit, he's probably like, for, wait, never. Probably for no. about four seconds, he was like that. Now, Justin, I got to say, right there is a perfect refuel opportunity. <laughs> that is a, that is a, I, the things, the things I wanted to refuel on, though, was like oxygen. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't think, that's what I didn't have enough oxygenated of Oxygenated blood would be great I, to reload that in the chamber. I joined a when I was living in LA. I joined a gym, and along with it came like one free consultation with a personal trainer. And the personal trainer was talking to me, and they were like, "So, what's your level of what?" I was like, "Let me stop you there." The answer is not. And he was like, "Well, hold, let me run you through some stuff." And we did ten seconds of like these jumping things, and I went in the bathroom and threw up. And I yeah. came back, and he was like, "Are you ready to keep going?" And I was like, "In what way is me throwing up not the end of this?" Like well, they, they were called I'm burpees, done. Trav. So they're called burpees, Trav. So you really should have seen it coming. I mean, My no, problem I is, to I never went back, and he like called me once a month, like, "Hey, just wondering if you wanted to pick up." I was like, "I am all set. Thank you very much." To continue the metaphor, my non-existent exercise regimen is as such that I am essentially standing at my own fuel pump, just letting the thing overflow. <laughs> I am, I am. If anything, I am overfueled, and there's about ankle high sort of a uh, pool of fuel just laying on the ground that I am just not burning. And really that's in preparation for, you know, if shit goes down, I'm, my my body will be, you know, just crazy and wild and just ready ready for ready for action, but um it's really a fire hazard. Uh how about another question? Please do this. My friend is a very kind person and she got a cute poster for me as a gift. Or else I think it was meant to be a gift. A lot of bad gifts this week, huh? Well, it's is, not the gift oh, that was the problem this time, if you read uh, on. The thing is, we are both so socially awkward, I'm afraid she might have just been showing it to me, and I assumed it was a gift, and she was too nervous to say that she was just showing it to me. My question is this, <gasps> is there a socially acceptable way to ask someone after the fact whether or not something was actually a gift or not, or am I doomed to live out the rest of my days wondering whether or not I'm a socially awkward poster thief? That's from Possible Poster Pincher in KCMO. <laughs> Um, you've actually come to the right place yes. because literally every time we have ever done a signing or like just sign stuff for people after a show, like literally four to five times I will be presented a, a picture or like art or something and it's always beautiful and I'm always running the math in my head like, am I to sign this or is this a gift to me? Because if I ask... Is this a gift? I can't. It sounds we, terrible. It sounds terrible. Well, and this did, like, this did happen to me once. Yeah, we actively to took all something. the time. Somebody yeah. somebody yes. showed me a thing. I was like, oh, this is great. And I went and handed it to Teresa. And then I came back and they said, I do need that back. And I was like, oh, yeah. Okay, after, sorry, a after, after one live show, I was like, you know, doing my usual running along the front of the stage, you know, high fiving people. And somebody pointed to a hat they had. I think the hat said like sweet, sweet baby brother or something like that on it. I forget what it said, but I took the hat. 
And I took it, and I was backstage reading Twitter, you know, seeing how people thought the show went, and I got a tweet from somebody who was like, geez, I'd love that hat back. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> Jeez, and, and, and really, I really love that hat. That, that is maybe the worst offense of all, is there was no body language there to suggest, like, here's a hat for you. Although it did say something that is, like, one of my titles on it. So It might as well have um, said, like, Griffin's hat. It was your IP. It I mean, was, it my was IP. your IP. And that's, no, that's it. That's Griffin didn't different. take it to wear it. He took it because it was copyright infringement. No, and I immediately that, incinerated it. That's a very different situation from when uh, Christian novelty music artist Mark Lowry stole my hat at a concert because he wanted to wear it. He knew it was an Atlanta Falcons hat, and that's his, I guess, his team as well. So he thought that he had dominion he did it over on my hat. He coveted your he did hat? It. He did it on purpose. He covered it in my hat, which is a sin. Thank you, Travis. And then he threw it into the crowd like, oh, wild show, Mark. Can I get my <laughs> <Wait>. hat back? <laughs> he threw it in the crowd as though he could not return it to you. Like, what an asshole. Yeah, he was like halfway down the the, the uh, uh, arena at that point, and he just chucked it into the crowd like, oh, man, what a fun show. And there's like... It's a weird thing of statistics because, like, statistically, nobody cared <laughs> about that hat. Like, if you weigh the statistics of the crowd, statistically, everybody thought, oh, man, that was just, like, a fun interaction that he had. And if you did the stats, it'd be, like, 1,999% p- of the people did not care. And then there's, like, one statistical outlier that was me that would right. like this hat back, please, Mark. Now, Mark? what I will say is I think this is, a, like, a very funny situation. Like, we have a good laugh about this after when we're debriefing about uh, the many, many sort of um, s- societal norms we fucked up during each and every signing because it's in- it's incalculable uh, how many times we goof up just uh, talking to and interacting with other humans. Um, and And we have a good laugh. Oh, boy, can you believe you tried to steal that person's hat and you know either failed or succeeded um and so i don't think there's any problem with you talk going to this person being like hey i have a weird question but did was that a gift or were you just showing it to me because there's no there's no like bad if they're like no it was a gift you goofus you can say like okay well i was i didn't know and i was worried about it then i think you can kind of laugh it off or if they say like yeah i was just showing it to you and you took it and i didn't know how to respond and that's kind of funny too and they will give it back i don't i don't think you have to worry too much about bringing this up well you could also just like find a copy of the poster and get them one too and be like now we're poster buddies That's yeah it's weird. like if you if you steal That's a car a as long as you buy them another car that looks like the car then you're f- totally fine wouldn't you want wait hold on though honestly if someone stole your car and you're like ah oh, someone stole my car and then you went outside the next day and there was a brand new version of that car sitting yeah no in the i driveway. mean the thing i said was nonsense the thing i said was absolute dookie nonsense and i wasn't expecting one of you to call me on it but I guess you did, and now this is where we're at. My assumption, this is my question. My assumption is that Mark Lowry probably doesn't remember stealing my hat. Yeah. The day, the day that Mark Lowry stole your hat was the most important day of your life. <laughs> to me, it was Tuesday. <laughs> so I always assume that. But like, we, ha- we have very clear visceral memories of every time we've ever fucked up. Do you think that if I were to grill Mark Lowry, he'd be like, ah, oh, Justin. Oh, man. Hey, bud. I think about that hat <laughs> every day. If you, if you really want to zap Ruder this, this event that happened, this shared event in years of Mark Lowry's life, the only reason he would wander back into the crowd and throw the hat to a random person is A, he didn't know where you were, but B, he knew he couldn't keep this hat he had absolved himself of the hat theft <laughs> guilt it, it was a that's serendipity a, moment where he knew someday that hat would make it back to you that, and if you're listening a, to this right now and you're looking and you're at, at a your mark mantle, lowry concert and you got hit in the face with the sharp bill of an atlanta falcons cap and kept it out of spite somewhere there's a huge fan of mark lowry who has saved this hat as a memento of the greatest day in their life when mark lowry yeah. threw a hat to them and they are listening to this right now get that to justin it is a pretty damning comment, or I guess darning comment on um, Mark Lowry, because he's a Christian music artist. Uh, it is a pretty damning comment on Mark Lowry. <laughs> his, the way his brain work was, well, I took it from the crowd, <laughs> and I gave it back to the crowd, so I guess I'm okay. Go back, Mark. From whence you came, hat. I think, I think Mark suffers from the same awkward sort of social issues that the three of us have where if somebody i took somebody's hat from the crowd at a live show and then wanted to give it back to them but did not know where they are i absolutely would just ultimate that motherfucker right back down the center aisle as hard as i possibly could because at that point i know i've still fucked up but i at least will not have this 
this this reminder on my dome constantly. I think that Mark did the only logical thing, and I think we need to cut him some some fucking slack. Well, he did what we macros would have called yours now. Yeah, which the last person to be touching the thing just inherits inherits the responsibility of having to deal with the repercussions of having that thing. Sure. Um, I got a quick Yahoo real quick before we get to the money. Yeah, it was sent in by. Do we don't want to talk about Mark Lowry anymore. Because no, I think we've ostracized our audience enough for one episode. My brother, my brother, and you. Um. Hannah Troxel sent this one in. Thank you, Hannah. It's Yahoo Answers user. Serve the servants asks. This is a quick one. Just looking for a quick answer from you guys. Straw poll. Okay. If Jurassic Park was real, would you go? Ooh. Mm. Okay, wait. I, wait. There's a very important factor here I need to know, and maybe we can just acknowledge this and then put it away. Is Jurassic Park real in a world in which we have all seen the Jurassic Park movies? I would think no. Then yes, I would go. Hands uh, down. Okay, then then what if the answer is yes? Then no, I would not go. I have seen yeah. I've seen what happens when we meddle in God's play place. And I do no, not I know. The, I, inter- the more interesting question is: You see a news story. You're it. You're you. Okay, but it's tomorrow. Uh huh. And wait, slow you down. See a news story. Yeah, you're you, but it's tomorrow, and you just see a sign that's like "Real Jurassic Park open." Believe you- it or not. Did you say Jurassic? <laughs> you did. No. Is that real a mix jabroni, of real jabroni, jabroni, jabroni Park? Is these open. dinosaurs are real jabronis. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna crotch chop all these T Rexes. <laughs> it's real Jurassic Park, except they're aware also of the films, so they're like, "Listen, <laughs> it's not gonna be like. This. We know how this sounds." We know how it sounds. It's not going to be like that. We've taken every precaution. This is, yeah. Listen, can't stress enough. We have also seen the movies. We have been we so know. careful. We know about our brand. I guess I'm, I am describing Jurassic World at this point, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, so, dra- but it's like, yes, it, we know. We get it. We get your hesitation. But it is real Jurassic Park, and we fixed it. And Travis, you have... The the only okay here. Let me sweeten the pot for you. Okay, it's not sweeten. It's like it's like sweetening the question. D- you have a ticket, but it is for opening day at Real Jurassic Park. <laughs> you do not but they swear, go but they swear. Well, <laughs> they're I'm like, more likely to go on opening day because that's when they're going to be most on point. You don't want to go so. two years in when they start to get lax with it. Yeah, you get fucking Ch- Ch- Chester, the 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 townie, watching the fucking raptor cages. Like, oh come on, boys! I just got a text. Uh oh, I turned my back on the raptor cages. Now I've been destroyed. That th- that logic doesn't hold, Trav. You look at opening day of like um, Magic Kingdom or Epcot mm-hmm. on on when those open, and they were up against the clock. But you had huge breakdown in ride Space Mountain, and Mickey ate broke. all those people. Mickey was, did eat all the kids. Was, yeah, was broken down more than it than it was open. I mean, the, but both of those were uh, because they were so taxed by the crowds of of people that were there. Snap so, is. like you, yeah, like I don't, I don't think that you that doesn't inoculate you. I think because me, they're not ready for that that number of people. Let me hit you with this plot for Jurassic World Two. Okay, uh, me as John Hammond Junior. Junior. Uh huh. And I'm like. I got it this time. I'm going to do it again. And then I'm going to have like a board of people who are like, no, so, so many people have You've died done this eight times, John. It's never worked. And I, I say, don't worry. First of all, shut up. You don't tell me what to do. My family made dinosaurs happen again. New Jurassic World. And you're going to love this. It's just all brontosauruses. Roll credits. No action. Don't worry about it. Never been a brontosaurus-based death in those movies. These gentle giants would never step on a toddler. I love these gentle giants. They're not going... Unless the toddler is made of leaves or uh, maybe... The only thing is just like you open it up and it's all brontosauruses and then you're like, oh, it'll be totally safe. And then, you know, uh, fucking Andy from uh, Parks and Rec is there, and he's like, uh, I don't know about this. I think it's going to go bad. And then everybody else is like, don't worry about it. It's all brontosauruses. And it's like, okay, here they come. Open up the gates. Everybody comes in. It's like, hi, welcome to Jurassic World. Here's your ghillie suit. And it's like, no, no. It no. Is, chomp, chomp, it chomp, is, chomp, chomp. It is wild when you think about the original Jurassic Park first time, right? There was definitely a moment where somebody like, Knock, knock, knock on John Hammond's door. He looks up from his dope ice cream, spared no expense. 
looks at it, looks at them in the face, and they're like, "Hey, um, should we make a T Rex?" And he was like, "Oh hell yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely." Like, <laughs> well, John, hold on. I, I know Wait, I asked, on. but you can see how should this goes make- bad, right? Should we make velociraptors? Oh yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. yeah. That'd Definitely. be great. The the logic there is that like if you made a park with dinosaurs, people wouldn't come unless it had dope ones that they liked. Are you kidding no, me? No, okay, hold on. I would like this is my plot for Jurassic World 2, right? Open it up, they have made one ti- triceratops. Big initial, big initial opening, everybody goes. Then two years in, it's like, well, we're bankrupt. Roll credits. <laughs> Nobody came anymore. Everybody got bored Nobody with came. dinosaurs. Everybody saw the one triceratops we made. Okay, here's what my, if you got to keep. A, what if you got to keep a triceratops? Oh, you go. You, you left. That is, I will say, my one logical mm-hmm. problem with Jurassic World is there is a line I think where Bryce Dallas Howard says, "You know what people want? Bigger dinosaurs." And I said, "I don't think that's true. What everybody wants is like a tiny T Rex they can keep in an aquarium on their desk." Like, that yeah. would be sick. If you're going to manufacture different sized dinosaurs, make me a really tiny brontosaurus. Give me a digi pet is, d- right? is basically what I want. And also, Bryce, I think you've misunderstood what the audience for this amusement park wants, and that is to visit it and not be destroyed by a powerful dinosaur jaw is my number one thing. If I heard we got a new Jurassic World and here's the attraction that you're just going to go nuts for, we've made bigger, more deadly dinosaurs, I would say... Well, y'all have really lost the. I can see the review on you know the the Verge. Like I I feel like their heart's in the wrong place on this one. I feel like maybe they should focus more on dinosaurs that won't destroy the the children with the powerful jaws and claws. Tiny dinosaurs like the ones from Pee Wee's Playhouse. That's what I. Those love. are fun. Now we're talking. Here's here's my pitch for Jurassic Park three. Even though they already made one, here's what I would do. Probably if they let me remake Jurassic Park three. I still Griffin is John Hammond Jr. Jr. because uh-huh. I love this character of John Hammond Jr. Jr. Sort of a petulant descendant. He's a real has, pissy, real pissy mess. And, yeah, and there's just so many merch the, opportunities. Yeah, yeah. He inherited the whole thing, and Jurassic Park three is is about him going to Isla Sorna because uh, they wiped out all the ones on Isla Nubar. But he, he goes to Isla Sorna, and he just is going to take them all because they're his. Uh huh. So the movie is about. These mm. are my dinosaurs. Yeah. My pap pap made them, <laughs> and I'm gonna put them. <laughs> I'm gonna put them all on my boat and take them to my house. Yeah, so I'm technically just litter- You can't eat me, T Rex. I'm your uncle, basically. <laughs> basically, your uncle. You wouldn't eat your uncle, to- would you? Put you in a boat and take you to my home because you're my dinosaur because my pap. And now it's we bought a zoo. It's like we bought a Jurassic Park, and it's like I don't know. This is really going to put some stress on the family. Like what? Having a bunch of Velociraptors around? Come on, Susan. These are my Velociraptors. They're my nephews, and I love them. They listen to me. They don't. They listen to me. They don't. They super don't. Just stop putting meat eaters in your. Stop putting carnivores. Just put herbivores. I would have gone to Jurassic Park for the opportunity to meet Wayne Knight. Like, you don't need to put a bunch of dinosaurs in there. Okay, wait, hold on. What people want is bigger Wayne Knight. What I have done, I've made a 10-foot Wayne Knight, and he is an herbivore. He's an herbivore. We got him eating kale, and he's just crazy about it. We keep him in this big pen. We've cloned a bunch of Wayne Knights. I found a Wayne Knight and a a piece of amber. Oh, Um, boy. Oh, my God. Wayne Knight is pregnant. Nature finds a way. (laughs) Nature finds a way. Uh, Let's go to the money zone. add pregnant Wayne Knight to my Tumblr <laughs> tags, and we're good to go. Hey, everybody. Do you want to make a fan site for pregnant Wayne Knight? The pregnant Wayne Knight fan site? Sure you do. We all do. But how? You don't know anything about coding. You don't know shit. Well, with Squarespace, you can. You can make a cool website dedicated to just about anything you want, and you can publish content there, links to videos, sell products and services, um, great for if you want to like keep people up to date uh, for uh, you know announcements or upcoming events or anything like that. Squarespace is perfect. I've made a couple websites on Squarespace now, and I don't know anything about building websites. But Squarespace makes it so easy to just like add in the elements that you need. And anything you don't understand, they have 24-7 award-winning customer support. And I will say, uh, and the copy doesn't say this, but I found it so useful, there are like countless YouTube videos that are like, oh, you want to do this? Here's how. 
So, yeah, it's super easy. I mean, uh, Travis made McElroy shows.com. I made Griffin McElroy.com. It took like a, an hour. It, it's so easy. And there are so many different like options for stuff you can do. And it, and if you do know about coding, there's also areas where you can add HTML and that kind of thing to customize it even more. Um, and you can find your own domains like Justin does and make the website really your own. So uh, if you want to check it out, go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code MYBROTHER, all one word, to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com and enter the code MYBROTHER, all one word. I want to tell you about stamps.com. Uh, here's a New Year's resolution you can act- actually keep. I know this is still on the forefront of everybody's minds, is these resis. You can add Stamps.com to your business, and you can save time and money this year, because Stamps.com brings all the amazing services of the U.S. Postal Service right to your computer. You can use your computer to print U.S. postage for any letter or package, any class of mail, and then the mail the uh, mail carrier comes and picks it, picks it right up from you. Stamps.com can also send you a digital scale that automatically calculates exact postage. It's really very, very convenient. Um, sometimes, you know, you're not able to leave the house and go to run to the post office. And so they, they bring the magic of the post office to you. So right now you if can anything, enjoy the stamps. I would say that it's too convenient. Sometimes I just mail stuff cause I can, you know what I mean? Yeah. I just pick yeah. up a piece of paper, stamps.com it, put it in the mail, get it out there. I, and then people are like, there's mailed, nothing on this. I mailed Travis some garbage that I just didn't feel like, th- you know, standing up and going to the, the that um, was garbage? trash can to throw it. Yeah, it was garbage. Yeah, well, you're the trash king. Anyway, right now you can enjoy the Stamps.com service with a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus postage and a digital scale. If you're ready for a happier new year, just go to Stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in my brother. That's Stamps.com, enter my brother. All one word, my brother. All one word. You ever wondered if Torsi would win a knockdown dragout brawl against Dunkey? Those are characters that we created, so this uh, is a IP-violating Jumbotron message. Maybe you've pondered if Tit Liquid, okay, would emerge victorious from a back alley free for all. Absolutely, well, would. On, no question about on the, it. No question on the Ultimate Showdown podcast. We don't debate those specific fights. Sorry, but we do debate other great matchups for the ages, like Punisher versus Beatrix Kiddo or Fezzik versus Jaws. Join Tr- Tristan the Marine. What's up, Cheryl? What's up, Cheryl Cannon and Fowler each week as they debate the age old question: Who would win in a fight? And yep. that show is called Ultimate Showdown. You can look for it wherever you download podcasts. And remember, fight it out, but be excellent to each other. Uh, do you want me to read this next one? Yes. Yes, I do. Uh, this message is for Sunflower Station, and it's from Sunflower Station, who says, oh, man. <laughs> Hello? Hello, McAvoy's? This message comes from Sunflower Station, v- Viron's band of meme criminals. Thank you, Viron, for creating a space where we can all support each other on our art and daily worries, play D&D, and watch Flintstones. Viva Rock Vegas together. Uh, that's the name of the movie. I don't know why I added a period there. Uh, here's to many more great memories and internet friends. P.S. Hamtaro Bot still sucks. Well, Hamtaro Bot has feelings. I don't know why you would say that. I also don't know if I said Viron's name correctly, but I sure hope that I did. Um, this is this is a uh, a wonderful little crowd. It sounds like, and I'm sitting here trying to think if I've seen Flintstones Viva Rock Vegas, and the answer is uh, no. Is wait, is that the one with Kyle McLaughlin, or is that the first one? Um, I think they both have him in it. The second one is the one with. Um Alan coming as the great gazoo. Oh, of course. So if you have that, you would not forget that. You would I mean, not yeah, forget that. Which that Barney is it? Uh, it's still the Ridge. Still the Ridge cast. Are you sure? Because uh, I think one is Rick Moranis. No, 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 no. You're right. It's not Rick Moranis. It's uh, a bald one. Yeah. Dick Moranis. <laughs> Uh, we have another message. I'm Dick Moranis, the evil Rick Moranis. <laughs> but also, Rick Moranis is my brother. He's cool. Honey, I shrunk the kids. Who fucking cares? I'm Dick Moranis. <laughs> <laughs> this is a message 4A from H. To my wife and best friend, thank you for giving me Taz. And then when I ran out, MBMBAM, even starting at episode one when you said I shouldn't, I can't believe how much we've accomplished in time period. But only together could we get it done. So let's have these good, good boys tell you how much I love you. And it's a lot. You are my everything. It's very nice and also vague. That's so sweet. That's so sweet. I think it was Stephen Baldwin, for the record. 
Hey everyone, Freddie Wong, Matt Arnold, and Will Campos, here to tell you about Story Break, a writer's room podcast where every week we, the Hollywood geniuses behind Video Game High School, have one hour to turn a humble idea into an awesome movie. Thrill as we weave the tragic tale of Jar Jar, a Star Wars story. We're going to double down on everything that made the prequels great. Jar Jar, (laughs) trade federation, (laughs) politics. Gasp as we assemble a pantheon of heroes for the Kellogg Cinematic Universe. We could get rid of Snap, Crackle, Pop. I wouldn't even miss them. You're crazy. They die in the second Oh, come on. (laughs) And join us as we make fun of Matt as he struggles to name a single Beyonce song. Well, yeah, put a finger on it. Sure, she wants to be Beyonce. Put a finger on it. Beyonce's (laughs) famous song. Will we break the story? Or will the story break us? Find out by joining us in the writer's room every Thursday on MaximumFun.org or wherever you get your podcasts. Here's a Yahoo sent in by Merritt Palmer. Thank you, Merritt. It's, uh, I've noticed a strange habit I have. If I'm at a coffee shop, I will take sips out of my empty mug. Nervous habit or what? And that was asked by me in college. (laughs) (laughs) It's actually an anonymous user, but we'll say it was from me in college. Additional details. I do it more when I'm staring around in space. The coffee shop is a real performative battleground, isn't it? Because you want to look like you're enjoying the coffee shop the best and most. And you sit there, and the coffee's empty, but you still want to look impressive, like you understand the complexity of each beautiful bean. And so you sip it, and I would often say things, usually under my breath, but, you know, akin to, like, mmm, exquisite beans today, or, mmm, what a fascinating bean. You, usually something complimentary about the bean, or, like, mmm, mm-hmm. I can really tell the where the beans came from. And say stuff like that. Spicy note to the beans today, Michael. And usually I, I there wasn't a Michael, but... One, one thing I like is complimenting the roast. Like, oh, what mm-hmm. a flirty roast. What a flirty roast. What a juicy is. roast. You really roasted the piss out of these beans. Oh, yeah. You roasted the shit out of these. <laughs> <laughs> these are these bad boys are toasty and roasty. And I can really taste the complexity of the notes. Well, one thing to do that's good at the coffee shop that they actually like is... Before they brew your coffee, ask if they can take a handful of beans and <laughs> roast them more. Uh-huh. They, and they'll do, they can. So they just scoop some out of the machine and then they put them in the oven that they use to heat up the turkey and cheddar sandwiches. Uh-huh. Mm. And they'll just roast them more. And they'll like, at first, they might kind of be like, huh? But then the more wizened, like, pros at Starbucks will be like, oh, he's been around. He knows that these beans need just a second long. Yeah, right. And it's it's good if you wait to do this until you, after you sort of like examine the beans. So it's like you've made a judgment call that like they could probably go and back. And get out your like little, little jewelers, you know, kind of uh, mm-hmm. glass. Oh, that's good, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, that's no, good. Really one more minute. Chomp one, chomp one up and crunch it until it's just coffee grounds and then go yeah, 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 and then spit it in the trash can. <laughs> You're not going to eat it. No. But it is, I think, nice to say, ask for your coffee to have a little bit of pulp. Mm-hmm. Just say, like, mm-hmm. I'll, you know, give me some of the beans sort of in there. I want to strain it with my tea. Everybody filters out the pulp. Thank you, Griffin. And it's so it's that's, a good note. That's where all the nutrients are, is in the pulp. And Otherwise, sure it's you, just... Make sure you ask them to leave room for the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah, you want room for cream and you want a little bit of holy spirit in there. And then other if you don't got pulp, we're we're basically just talking about hot bean water. Yeah. And that's not that's not what God You need wanted. a better mouthfeel. That's that's always my problem with like the, that weak just it's just liquid <laughs> coffee. Like what's that? You know what I mean? Like what one good thing to do at the coffee store uh-huh. is ask for room for cream. And then when they give you your coffee, turn on your heel and walk out the door. And they're going to take a second and be like, wait hmm. a minute. Do they know about some other kind of cream <laughs> that we don't have here? Like, do they have a secret good new cream that we don't have here at the Bucks? Yeah. And that's going to drive them crazy all day long. Yeah. Uh, you'll have a little less coffee, but that'll be fine. Oh, you guys, uh, <laughs> you don't know about dog cream yet? <laughs> oh, boy. Ew. Well, uh, joke's on you, I guess. You don't do you do you do boneless coffee and you don't use dog cream. Boy, that's a real shame. Anyway, bye. I'm very smart. You know what I like to do? I like to order coffee but then ask for it in a bread bowl. Mmm. That's that's nice. Yeah. That's a breakfast right there. It's fun and it's also um I don't like it when I am drinking my coffee and I don't feel an enormous amount of pressure 
to drink the coffee extremely quickly before it gets everywhere. Well, and the nice thing is once you're done drinking it, you can then you have a little like coffee soak snack. Um, mm. You get a nice little burst of extra coffee there at the end. And you know what? If you eat it fast enough, you can get another cup in there and they just keep refilling it. Yeah. Does anybody do coffee in like a biscotti mug? Is that something you can order? So wait, like the biscotti is shaped like a mug and you pour the coffee in it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could I do that? Holy shit. I mean, you would more or less have to shotgun that that bean water or else, I mean, the burns would be significant. You'd want a cold brew for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Is it possible to go up to the counter and say, like, before you grind these little bastards down, do you mind if I sing to the beans a little bit? <laughs> Can I sing at your bean box to make the beans Wait, is, taste even a little bit better? Is your shop offering you that? You have to ask for it. Where are you going? It's so rare that they <laughs> offer singing to the bean box. Um, and yeah, I mean, I guess this is you know when you when you go to a a, a Starbucks, don't even think about it. There's very little singing because it's uh, to them. It's a quantity game. Yeah. They can't take a, a minute there to sing a beautiful They might hymn. have a radio yeah. on next to it. It is not the same. No, they think that it compl- accomplishes that, the same thing, but it doesn't. One thing that I like to do is say, before you grind the coffee, I bring some of my own personal blend with uh-huh. me everywhere I go. Can you grind that into it? And then you reach out into your pocket and... And you pull out a bunch of movie ticket stubs and paper clips, uh-huh. mm-hmm. and then you hand that to them, and sort of let them figure it out. What I like to do it, is I like to go to the go to the counter and say, "Hey, um, I would like the beans that will be in my coffee," and then I take those home and I just sit on them for like twenty four, twenty six hours. Then I come back, them. they grind those duff. up, yeah, mm, and then mm. I let someone else drink it. I like to pick each bean out of the bean box like I'm grabbing a lobster at like a nice seafood mm-hmm. restaurant. I say, I want this bean and this bean, and I want this bean, <laughs> and I say, this bean looks No, beautiful. not that bean. Oh, here we Next go. Next to it. And then I turn to them, I say, how many beans does it take to do one coffee? And they say, like, a hundred, and I say, like, this is going to take too long, and it's going to not be a very funny joke for the podcast. And then I stop. Those are some other things you can do at a coffee store. I love these weird beans. <laughs> I love my we weird never ta- beans. We never talk about that part of it, but you eat beans out of a can on a campfire uh-huh. mm-hmm. for a good for a good Western snack, and that's the same as what you do every morning when you get these these uh y- you know fast beans is what I call them because they make me move just a little bit faster. Uh, yeah. And you pour hot water through them and you crunch them all up. It's basically mm. what you're doing is it's just bean water, folks. Whoa, we slow never down. think about that it's beans. It's beans, but it's the same kinds of beans that you would put in, uh, you know, a chili or uh, you know, a bad gumbo. How do I confront my landlord about frequent pop-ins? My landlord thinks it's okay to show up whenever he wants because he thinks my roommates and I are all friends with him. In the past, he has shown up to our, use our kitchen table as a desk to work on. Whoa. <laughs> Laying flooring until 11 p.m. on a Monday, set up a Christmas tree without request or permission. What the fuck? Borrowed our kitchen for cooking, take a shower, sleep on our couch, and worst of all offenses, host game nights at our house and then invite us, the people who actually live in the home he is renting out, to join his party merely hours before being thrown. What? I am extremely non-confrontational, and I'm about to explode at this point. Please, Jesus, help me, brothers. That's from Landlord in La La Land. It's good that you've asked for our help and also Jesus' help, because this is going to take all four of us on deck. (laughs) I I Um, will say, okay, first question. When your landlord leaves, do they, like, walk out and hop into the back of a white, like, surveillance van because I guarantee this is like an elaborate Big Brother style TV show where they can't they can't believe you haven't left yet. You were only supposed to be the first episode, and now this yeah, is John, gone John on for has John Quinones has had you on the hook here for for quite some time. Um, this is his longest grift ever. This is this is wild. It's unacceptable. These are not these are not pop ins in the traditional landlord sense where. They're stopping in no. to make sure everything's doing okay, interrupting your thing. They're throwing parties at your house. It is breaking and entering yes. at this point. It is, I, here's how I think this shook out. The landlord thought, 
man, I could use a little extra income. I'm going to rent out my house. And then you came over and you signed the lease and he gave you the keys and the door shut. And he was like, ah, shit. That's my only house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he is, I think, still living there, basically, is the is what I think is, has happened. Is he has mistakenly not, he has made his own property the rental property. This is, this is the first time that I think we've gotten a question where I've been excited to see how this plays out on the next episode of Judge Judy. So, like, there's a part of me that's kind of like, hmm, this is, I've never seen this before. But it's such a weird, ba- I know you're non-confrontational, uh-huh. but I think this is one of those rare cases that requires one of those confrontations I've heard so much about. Well, this is the thing is, I, I get being non-confrontational where, like, someone's like, I want to fight you. And you're like, I don't want to fight. But this person is actively punching you in the face. You may need to fight them, it sounds like. Yeah, it, it sounds it, like a fight maybe in order. Um, or or yeah, move? I, I mean, but you signed the. Does is there anything in the contract that says like? And by the way, whenever I want to play Carcassonne with my buddies, you're invited, I'm, but it's gonna be in your kitchen. So deal with that. Because if so, shit. you should have read that contract maybe a little bit closer. Otherwise, it's just not acceptable. This is bad. Even if I had a friend, even if my best friend was doing this, it would be a problem. Yeah, it's not good. All right, we've talked about how bad it is. What can we and Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, Lamb of Lambs, King of Kings, do to... Son of David. Son of David, do to make this The better? quiet storm. The quiet, the quiet raging storm. Um, the King of the North. What can all four of us do to, to make this hap- a, a better situation? Change the logs. I th- that's illegal. Is it? Yeah, can't probably not. Yeah, what probably if you did be. it, but then yeah, pretend like you didn't? Can you invite okay. like a hundred, like two hundred people over to your house so that, um, like a you know a Tokyo train during rush hour? It's like, sorry, well, I'll full up. Can't get nobody else in here. If you invite enough people over to your house, you probably won't notice that he's there, which is a very good passive way of handling this because it's already so full. One more person is not going to hurt. Is it possible to hire a drill bit tailor? Okay. And that movie's so important to me uh-huh. for so many reasons. But there's so many situations that could be required by getting a real fucking hard ass like Owen Wilson. Well, what's great, Griffin, is <laughs> what we're dealing with here is a you, me, and Dupree scenario that can be fixed with a drill bit tailor. With another Owen scenario. Wilson. Yeah. And if that doesn't work, then you, you get yeah, um, Marmaduke. You get the, what the dog. A dog. What's the dog movie? Not the other one. The other uh, Marley, Marley, Marley and me. You. But Marley Marley's me? a big, f- vicious dog who's not gonna let this gentleman you, just me sort and of Marley. stride right now. You, me, and Marley, the the the, the battle beast, the the the, <laughs> death the robot dog. It's because it, you gotta if you won't confront them, and I understand that. Um, I'll I'll do it, and I'm not. I'm pretty non confrontational, but it sounds like this. You're in need of somebody to step in and say like, hey. Dude, you can't just come over whenever you want. That's wild. You cannot throw parties at this house where we live. No, no, no. You need to throw uh-uh. your hat into the crowd. You need a throw new right third roommate to come in. Mark, and get Mark back. Lowry. Mark Lowry won't fuck around in this situation. Yeah, get Mark Lowry. It sucks because there's really no other way around it other than telling your landlord like you can't just throw it, it, it some of the if you want to re, like real if you're really uncomfortable about being non-confrontational wait for the last thing to happen about throwing a game night at your house without telling you cuz that's unacceptable by literally anybody's standards and your landlord also knows that it sucks and is not a cool thing to do and if you come to them and say like you can't just throw parties at our fucking house dog then i th- like un- unless they are completely like removed from the situation i think they'll understand sort of i think they'll grok what you're putting down here. and i think the word that you need to invoke is boundaries Be- we gotta have boundaries. We, we gotta set some boundaries here right because i think that is a term that applies to every relationship that exists so it's not about like i think you're a bad person or hey we're not friends it's we need to set some boundaries yeah, like it's one or thing if you want to come over and hang out from time to time, but you can't be here when we're not here. Yeah, and again, like if you're uncomfortable with it, hire Owen Wilson to set up these boundaries for you, and he'll just be like, sure. "Oh wow, wow, you can't throw a party over here, wow." 
so that's how it, that's Owen Wilson. Yeah, I've been working on it. Me and uh, Brian, my voice teacher, we've been working on Owen lately. Um, I'm going to do some ADR work. I'm moving to Hollywood to become sort of his uh, vocal, verbal stuntman. He's, there's a lot of times they want Owen Wilson to say words, like potty words, that he doesn't want to say. He hates saying these potty words. But I'll say them. I don't care. Uh, things like bastard and piss. But I'll, I've learned to say them in his voice so that when he's on the set and he's like, wow, I'm really off. And then I'll get in there and I'll be like, piss, and just say the potty <laughs> words for him is a new thing that I'm doing. So if you want, I can do that. Do you do parties uh, oh. too, Griffin? Like you just show up and you do Owen Wilson? But yeah, I show up to kids' parties and I say the words "piss" and "bastard" and "ass" and "shit," <laughs> just like Owen Wilson would say. Them. But I say them in Owen Wilson's voice, and I don't, I don't dress up or anything. I just look like me. But I, you know, roll up, and then you know, the ten-year-olds are like, "Do piss again," and I'll be like, "piss." <laughs> it's so good. I've never yeah. heard Owen Wilson say that word, so I don't know how accurate it is. But it's, hey, he doesn't like saying it. Travis said the toilet word, and he hates these words. But it sounds like I would imagine he would sound saying it. Yeah. You know? Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Then these, I've spent $30,000 on these lessons. It's so it paid off. Really it's worth off. it. You're yeah. going to make that back just I, on this circuit. I wanted to say, I wanted to end this episode with something that I want to talk about real quick, because I was looking at other Owen Wilson movies, uh-huh. trying to see if there might be some funny funny like back catalog stuff that i could pull out i'd forgotten he was in armageddon i was like wait owen wilson was in armageddon yeah he gets got i think pretty quick so i i click i click through um just just i guess a closing meditation the character names in the movie armageddon are fucking buck wild oh give me some of them uh okay so bruce willis plays harry s stamper okay by itself, that may not be very buck wild. Billy Bob Thornton, Dan Truman. Okay. Still all right. Ben Affleck plays AJ Frost. Ooh. All right. Will Patton plays Charles Chick Chapel. Steve Buscemi's name is Rockhound. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's the Transformer. <laughs> Mark Michael Clark Duncan recipes. His he is J. Otis Bear Curleen. Bear is his nickname. J. Otis Curleen, nicknamed Bear. And uh Owen Wilson, his character's name is Oscar Choice. It actually isn't. It actually that doesn't that's not <laughs> a name. You know, that was, was just was his past. that was his long con to try to win an Oscar. Yeah, but they chose to they were like, Thank you for the choice, Owen. We're gonna pass on this one, I think. <laughs> or our answer is no to the choice. Uh folks, that's gonna do it for us. Thank you so much uh for, for listening. We we very much appreciate you. Um I wanna give one quick plug. You know you can watch our TV show on Verve. Uh that's VRV dot C O. My brother, my brother, me, the show is there. You can watch all six episodes plus all the extra stuff. While you're there, you can check out a new show that um I was on. It's called Slug Riot. It's an animated series. Uh, I play a character named Very Deadward. He's the basis of this uh, moldcore band called Slug Riot, and it's a. There's only one episode up so far, um, but it was really fun to do. Uh, and the um, oh, it looks like the two and three are up too, so you can go watch those too. VRV.co. I believe they're free, uh, or at least the first one is to to watch. But uh, uh, Slug Riot is the name of the show. And it was really fun to make, and the episode is just like three minutes long, so go check that out, because it was really fun. Um, I want to do just a couple quick plugs. Um, One, this, uh, I think it's Thursday, the 25th, I'm going to be at the John Hodgman and Gene Gray show, the John and Gene show, uh, at the Bell House uh, that night. Uh, You can get tickets to that at bit.ly forward slash Travis J and J, and that's in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, And before the show, I'm going to be hanging out at the Hinterlands, so if you want to come... Uh, say hi there, grab a drink, uh, help support uh, Stuart Wellington and, and co. Come do that and then come over to the show. Um, I also want to say, speaking of John and Jean, um, so Hal Lublin and I have a charity fundraising podcast called Surprisingly Nice. And it's been a while since we put an episode out, but we just recorded a new one with John Hodgman and then special guest Jean Gray shows up. And we've changed our funding model that basically how it is is we're raising money. We set a goal for $500 for this first episode. And when we hit that, we will publish the episode. And that money goes to World Central Kitchen, um, which is a, a like food charity that makes meals. Uh, specifically right now, they're working uh, to provide meals for Puerto Rico. Um, and Hodgman has said that on top of that, every dollar raised for World Central Kitchen, 
he will match that and donate to Planned Parenthood because that was the second choice for a charity. So every dollar you donate is going to actually benefit two different charities. Uh, you can donate at paypal.com, paypal.me slash surprisingly nice. Um, so far, we've already raised about $250 in just like three days. So I think we're going to hit. That's awesome. Yeah, I think we're going to hit that $500 and you can help with that. Um, Isn't the uh, the Joko Cruise also coming up? Yeah, soon? Joko Cruise. I, I'm not going to be mentioning it much longer because it's in like three weeks. Uh, but I'm getting really, really amped for it. It's going to be a super fun time, and I'm really looking forward to it. Um, and you can find out about that at jococruise.com. Uh, and one more kind of a coming soon. Um, I'm putting together a show here in Cincinnati that I'm calling the Cincinnati Underground Society Show. Um, and it is a secret show in that I'm not going to announce who the guests are ahead of time, but for this first show, I've already got five people coming and it's going to be a really good time. Uh, so tickets are going to be coming soon for that. Um, and I have made a website for that that I'm going to look up right now. Can I ask if you called it the Cincinnati Underground Secret Society, which is a little bit redundant just so the acronym can be cussed? Yes, absolutely. It's it's the Cincinnati Underground Society, and this is the Cincinnati Underground Society show. Um, and yes, it's uh the website I am currently working on is cuss.live. Um, and so that is where I'll be putting up it's right now. There is literally nothing to the website, but it is on Squarespace. Um, but that is where I will post ticket links and stuff, and hopefully I will have that up soon. Um, and then our first show is going to be March 30th here in Cincinnati. And then my hope is to make it a monthly show with different guests every time and, like, secret society pins and that kind of thing. It's going to be a real fun time. But more information about that will be coming soon. Uh, thanks to John Roderick and the Long Winters for the use of our theme song. It's a departure off the album, Putting the Days to Bed. It's a fantastic album that... You should get if you don't already have it. Thanks to Maximum Fun for having us on the network. There's so many great shows and a bunch of new shows that you should check out. Uh, shows like The Greatest Generation and Tights and Fights and The Beef and Dairy Network and so many more all at MaximumFun.org. And uh, as we mentioned a couple of times, all of our stuff is also at MacRoyShows.com. Do you guys want that final? Yeah. It was sent in by Leslie. Thank you, Leslie. It's Yahoo Answers user Fozzie B asks. Can Jello steal my energy if I am an Aquarius? <laughs> was just a McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This has been my brother, my brother, me. Kiss your dad square on the lips. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. Hi there. I'm film critic April Wolf and host of the Maximum Fun podcast, Switchblade Sisters. Do you love genre films? Do you love female filmmakers? Do you love discussions on craft? If your answer is yes, you'll love Switchblade Sisters. Every episode, I invite one female filmmaker on, and we talk in-depth about their fave genre film and how it influenced their own work. So we're talking horror, action, sci-fi, fantasy, bizarro, and exploitation cinema. Mothers, lock up your sons, because the Switchblade Sisters are coming for you. Available at MaximumFun.org or wherever you find your podcasts.